If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, long distance drivers and truckers, what's the weirdest, scariest thing you've seen slash experienced while on the road? I was 15 at the time. And running a fur trap line in the desert of southwestern Utah. I was about 20 minutes from an Indian restaurant. And I was just heading home around twilight. I was driving a four-wheeler down a wide, shallow canyon. As I was driving, I looked up and saw the silhouette of a man in a large headdress on the canyon wall to my left. He was holding a stick or spear above his head. I was super unnerved, as I was 5 miles from town. I sped up to about 35 miles per hour and tried to get out of the canyon. I looked to my left and saw that thing keeping perfect pace with me. I sped up to about 40 miles per hour, trying to keep from crashing. I looked over, and it still kept going. I looked forward, then looked back, and it was gone. I have no idea what I saw or what might have happened if I stuck around. I haven't been in the hills after dark or within a mile of the canyon since. I was driving down a South Texas country road many years ago, heading to a ranch party. I was not a good kid, but I was sober because I hadn't reached the party yet. It was raining a little bit, and the sun had just set when I turned onto the dirt road that led to the ranch. I was creeping along in my truck and had just turned my lights on when something about three feet tall dashed out of the woods and across the path. It was insanely fast, but I got the impression of a giant, hairless rabbit without ears running on its back legs. I had the windows cracked, even with the drizzle, because I like the sound of nature, and I remember realizing that it hadn't made a noise, coming or going. I continued to the party, feeling weird, and had my story roundly mocked, chupacabra, so I stopped talking about it. But I saw a weird thing that I can't explain. It probably has an explanation, but it's stuck in my head for 20 years now. I live in very rural western Pennsylvania. One night after a party, I was a good kid and didn't drink, so I was stone sober for this, I was driving my buddy Dan home through the middle of nowhere. The road we were on to go to his house literally had grass growing down the center. I still remember the sentence I was saying whenever we saw it. I was talking about wanting to mail a box of bees to a dude I had beef with over a girl. It was just a dumb, stupid driving conversation, but the moment made it stick with me. We were laughing at what I said, and this thing took a step and then leapt over the road in front of us. I will never forget it turning its head to look at my car as it bounded across the road. I wasn't even sure it had happened and didn't say anything, but I noticed Dan had stopped laughing too. He just said, did you just see that? The best way I can describe it is that it was incredibly tall, 7 or 8 feet would be my best guess. It was beanpole skinny. It was dark, gray, and smooth. It had no features. There are no eyes, mouths, or anything distinguishable on its body. Just a gray, human-like figure. My headlights fully lit it up, and there was nothing but a form to it. I remember it looking smooth, but my headlight didn't shine off of it. It was over in a flash, but I can still see it in my head. Dan refused to get out of my car whenever we got to his house. We just sort of sat there in disbelief, describing what we saw of it. Had he not been there and seen it for himself, I would have thought it was just my mind playing tricks on me. It was just so jarring that it has never left my mind. I think about it often. I don't really even believe in anything paranormal. Whatever I saw that night was not right, whatever it was. Many years ago, a friend and I decided to visit our mutual friend at her university and spend the weekend with her. We had extremely detailed directions to follow, and we were told the trip should take about three hours. While nothing went wrong on our drive, it seemed to take forever. I don't remember exactly at what point the woods started, but I do remember traveling through these woods for a long time, perhaps an hour. We were already well past the three-hour time frame my friend had given us by the time we left the woods. When we finally reached my friend's college town, it had been nearly four and a half hours since we'd left. We didn't get lost. We never hit traffic or stopped for more than a few minutes. But we quickly forgot about it since we were happy to spend the weekend with our friend. When the trip back was a little over three hours, we thought it was weird but didn't think much of it at the time. It wasn't until my next trip to visit that I realized something had been strange. I spent that whole next trip waiting for the long path through the woods that we had been on the first time, but it never appeared. Following the same directions as the first time, the entire trip took me about three hours, as did every other trip I made out there in the following years. I don't know what happened, and I've never been able to replicate it. I still wonder what happened and where we really were when passing through those woods. I went on a road trip from Texas to Washington last year. The trip up was largely uneventful except for hitting a coyote in Oregon and seeing the unknown debris burn up in the atmosphere near Spokane, Washington. The way back, however, was odd. 
My family and I stopped at a rest stop in southern Utah, then drove nonstop through Colorado, and once we got to northwest NM, my wife woke up, and we decided to hit another rest stop. We googled the nearest one on our route, it wasn't too far up. We then had to turn left off the highway to get to it. This one was designed like a big loop around the center of the facilities, so you enter where you exit. It was dark, with only a few lights working, a moderate number of cars, and even an RV with its lights on. Looking back, I didn't see another person the whole time, not even a shadow in the RV. We get out, one of my sons stays in the car, and my wife stays with him. I take the other to the bathroom. It's the old composting toilet style bathrooms that rely on natural light and don't have electricity. We do our thing in the dark, but I was uneasy the whole time and kept my son close. Nothing eventful happens. My wife goes to the bathroom and comes back. We leave, having to turn left to get back onto the highway. Well, we eventually talk about the rest stop, and I find out that my wife also had an uneasy feeling the whole time too. After this stop, I found myself kind of falling asleep, but instead of drifting off and hitting the rumble strips, I'd feel like I'd blink my eyes and there would be something in the road and attempt to stop, but I would wake up when I felt the car slowing down to find no obstruction, but I slowed to 30 from 70. This happened three or so times every now and then, but I wouldn't think anything of it except that not too long later I saw the silhouette of something that looked like a man bent over on all fours except its back was straight because its arms were as long as its legs. It raised its head, and the head was long with glowing eyes. My brain processed that nothing normal looks like that, and after seeing this, alarm bells went off, and I shouted, did you see that? I just had to get away. Well, we find civilization with other people around a few miles away at a casino and stay there till sun up. I tell this story to a friend and decide to google the casino and rest stop to show her where it happened. I found the casino, but there are no rest stops in northwest New Mexico that come up. We checked the New Mexico dot and found nothing. And we checked my data to see where Google's tracked me. My GPS line never goes left into and back out of anywhere. Just a weird turn where it looks like I teleported back a few miles and kept on. My wife and I realized something wasn't right. I told this to another friend and he mentioned it sounds like a skinwalker, but I didn't know what that was really at that moment, but after looking it up, it sounds right. We drove back to Washington this week and took the same route up through New Mexico and never saw the rest stop. We didn't see anything out of the ordinary, actually, but we did get 40 miles per gallon in my car when the rest of the trip I got 36, my car is rated for 36 highway. I am in high school, and it's a good school as the school is not very well known as it is for middle class kids. The school has seven classes in one day, and the teacher who told me his story is my second class of the day, so for the rest of the day I was thinking about it, but anyway, here is his story. It was the middle of the night, and he was driving through the Arizona desert, with it being pitch black outside and a deserted road. He was driving a little above the speed limit when he hit what he thought was a dog. He got out to check it out and found some weird, thick hair all over his biceps, but no dent or animal in view. He was confused. Then he saw some blood on the ground and got his flashlight out of his car to follow the blood. Following the blood trail to a weird little lake or stream, he was looking around for the dog when his light ran over the dog. The dog was revealed by his flashlight to be a humanoid figure hunched over looking at him. He flipped out, ran away, and got back into his car, about to floor it, when he looked into the rear view mirror. The figure was sitting in his back seat in the middle, smack dab in view of the review mirror. My teacher flipped out even more and ran out of the car somewhere in the middle of the Arizona desert. Later, he went to a Navajo tribe. He told some locals what had happened, and they convinced him to go see the Navajo tribe. They told him how he experienced a skinwalker and that he was marked for life by this encounter. The thing that's been happening is on a pretty notorious road in my town. This road has had numerous murders and ghost sightings and is genuinely creepy at night. Not to mention that there's a horse ranch on it that the owners drop like flies and their prize-winning horses mysteriously died on. My main interaction here lately happened right near this ranch. I was driving home from school, and I take night classes, so it was pretty dark. I drive a shitty old Taurus that has an issue every other week, but I'm poor, so any car is good. Anyway, I was driving, and my car started to overheat and started acting up. The hiccuping was so bad that I decided to pull over to the next spot I could. This road is very curvy, and there's only one straight way, right in front of the ranch, go figure. I pulled off and called my girlfriend's uncle, who works on cars, and he said he would be there in about 30 minutes. No big deal, I thought, I'll wait in the car. However, my car's heat is broken, and it was colder inside than outside, so I decided to wait on the hood of my car. I sat opposite the iron gate that was the entrance to the ranch. 
The entrance goes out into two small fields where they would showcase their horses, the last one to die was a celebrity named Duke. The fields end with a small forest and a road going through to the main house. Ever since the first horse and person deaths came out, there were rumors that the place was haunted. They were, of course, natural. At least the peoples were to some degree. The horses were slaughtered by a bear. It was very doubtful, but that's what was said. I never stepped foot near the place before and wasn't planning on it. But as I sat down on the hood of my car, browsing internet, I heard something in the field. When I shined my flashlight to see what it was, my heart dropped. It looked like a pale, skinny dog, I guess. It looked wrong. I freaked out and got in my car, and it seemed to run at me. I got in and looked, but didn't see it. Of course, I'm not an idiot and decided not to get a tour and look but to just sit calmly in my car. I heard a growl somewhere near me and GTFO'd. I turned my car in and hightailed it out of there. I, of course, ducked my car up doing so, but as soon as I got out of the woods, I pulled over and waited. It's been about four days, and when I drive that road, I still see a pale shape in the dark, and it fills me with fear. My grandma recently passed, and I wanted to share a story she used to tell. In the late 1960s, before having my dad, I had my uncle for about five years. She lived close to the tribe in Carnegie but still lived closer to Medicine Park. Usually she would go to Carnegie during the week for groceries as she worked nights at her job during the weekend, but on the odd occasion, she'd go to Medicine Park to get whatever groceries we needed that weekend that she either forgot or didn't get enough of. The reason she did it was because there were no stores in Carnegie that were open late at night, but there was one in Medicine Park. She then told us that the mountain we drove around was sacred to the tribe, and we were promised that no road would be built there by the government in the 1900s, but of course they built some there anyway, so when driving, you can get a good view of the mountain and the lake. Because of this, it is now haunted by a spirit that's aggressive if you drive at night. Now, a lot of people can agree that native creatures and supernatural stories were just made up, but this was the first real event that made her believe more than what she thought was real regarding native ghost stories. This particular night, the clouds covered the moon and stars, so it was darker than usual. It didn't bother her as much as she could still see the road and say, I'll be damned if I'm wasting gas on Carnegie, but around halfway through the trip, her car stopped. Just turn off by itself, she thought it was weird, but probably just something wrong with the car. She went to turn it on, but nothing happened. So she tried a second time. Immediately after attempting to start it a second time, she said she heard something whoosh above the car. Then she started it a third time, and it worked. But in the span of about four seconds, she said she saw a large black figure in the middle of the road, not six feet away from the car. When she noticed, she said it reacted to the lights shining as it quickly turned its head and showed its big, glowing eyes. It then flew up into the air, never to be seen again. She just called it the owl, but me and my brother like the name Owl Man better, which is kind of a joke as we're obsessed with silly cryptids like Frog Man. But the reason she claims this was a significant encounter was because owls in our tribe are taboo and are said to be bad omens. If you see one, it means someone close to you is going to die very soon. And about a year later, when my dad was less than a year old, they found out my grandpa had cancer. It would be a little over a decade before he died from it, but the owl and the bad news were not coincidental. Now, do I believe it? Yes, I do. My grandma was dead set on it being a true story, and my dad believes it's too, probably because he also had stories of paranormal stuff happening to him. He said it himself, there are things out there you can't even imagine. I love fishing, it's one of my true passions. Me and my cousin Bill decided to leave that night to fish for brown trout at a secluded high alpine lake about 30 minutes from our location. Brown trout are more active at night, so we packed his jeep up and headed out around 7 in the evening to give us time to drive there and set up before going after some big browns. The drive took us through an extremely remote and dense forest, which is very beautiful, but the woods around there have a very unnerving feeling about them. About 20 minutes into the drive, I asked my cousin if he could pull over so I could take a piss, chugging a Powerade wasn't the best idea, lol. He pulled over along the road on a very narrow shoulder. I got out and did my business, and I hopped back into the car. We lit a cigarette, and as soon as we started to pull out, we stopped dead in our tracks. In front of our vehicle, about 30 feet in front of us, was a man in a white shirt with black pants and platinum blonde hair that was slicked back. The creepy thing was that he wasn't there when we pulled in, it was like he just appeared out of nowhere. He was facing the embankment on the other side of the road, so all we could see was his left side. He was holding what looked like a log or a big branch from a tree and was pointing in towards the embankment. We just sat there watching him for what seemed like an hour, but in reality it was only about a minute. 
I finally snapped out of my trance and started nudging my cousin, telling him to go. As soon as we started to take off, the man turned his head at us without moving his body. This is the part that makes my skin crawl and my stomach turn to this day. His face was completely blank, like a piece of white paper. All we could see was the reflection of our headlights where his face should be. I freaked, and my cousin gasped, turned the jeep around, and we sped off. It didn't even cross our minds to think maybe it was a person who needed help, we just took off. We couldn't come up with any logical reason why he didn't have a face, and the fact that he appeared out of thin air in a matter of seconds in the middle of the woods at night in bear country we didn't even go fishing that night, and we told my cousins and my aunt when we got back. They thought we were playing some joke, but what we saw that night was no joke, it was so real. I was driving home from work one night, and I was on the road I live on, maybe about a minute from my house. I had this weird feeling the entire drive home, but I chalked it up to my anxiety. I was driving slowly on my road because we have a ton of wildlife, and they are especially active at night. As I am driving, I see a man standing on someone's lawn. He was a white man wearing a dark blue hat. I couldn't make out any features on him. I had this really strange feeling, and I started to slow down even more because I was just so confused. The man was standing near the edge of this person's lawn, and it was very clear that it was a person. As I got closer, it was a deer. It was like I was looking at an optical illusion. Slowly, as I got closer, they started to look more and more like deer. And while driving past, I just started at it. I was so scared. When I got home, I ran into my house, and I still don't know what that was or if it means anything at all. So, I saw something not quite human, although I wasn't alone, my high school friend saw it too. We were driving to my house along a long, dark road, high beams on. As we turned onto the road and rolled along, I saw something crouched in the center of the road. I thought it was a very large kangaroo, I'm from Australia. I said to my friend, hey, look, it's a kanga. And then froze as we ground to a halt, the engine softly purring, about 10 to 15 feet away from it. My friend looked up, and I watched the color drain from her face, just like mine had already done. My hands were firmly on the steering wheel. She kept repeating, what is that? What is that? The creature was hunched over on all fours, naked, pale-skinned, bald, and thin, ribs were visible, it was at least six to seven feet. A big mouth with really strange, unsettling teeth. Like ape teeth, sharp and the faintest bit human. It just stared at us, perfectly framed in the headlights of my car. Its eyes were black and sunken into its head. The nose had just two holes. It was quite possibly the most terrifying thing I had ever seen. After about two to five minutes, I said, well, what? What do we do? I inched the car forward, I'd figured I'd rather keep it in our sights than turn around with our backs to it. So we rolled forward, and the creature walked, on all fours, to the side of the road, letting us by, but its face was fixed firmly on our car. Not just our car, but us inside of it. It just kind of let us go slightly around it. We got sideways, and it started moving quickly into the brush to the side of the road. The closest it came to us was about two to five feet. We raced home, screaming and frantic. We burst in the door and told my parents what we saw, and they didn't believe us. They thought we were stoned, but we hadn't had a single puff of a joint or a drop of beer. They said it must have been a kangaroo that got clipped. It wasn't. I remember it as clear as day. Today I was watching a show about mysteries, and it all came flashing back. I still have that friend online, but we grew apart and haven't seen each other in about eight to nine years. But when I messaged her about what we saw, I was hoping she would say, um, no, that must have been a dream but she didn't. She word for word recounted everything I saw, when she mentioned it was crouched in the middle of the road, I got a faint feeling of pins and needles and almost vomited. My boyfriend and I were on a late night drive, with me in the passenger seat. It was dark out, and the area we were in was surrounded by woods. We came to a stop at a red light and sat listening to music. The light turned green, and he drove ahead, and all of a sudden I couldn't see anything. I couldn't see street lights that would have been ahead or the headlights of the car illuminating the road, just black. I blinked so many times, thinking it was just my eyes or something, but there wasn't a thing I could see for a good 3 to 4 seconds. After that time, everything was visible again, the street lights, headlights, and the wood in my peripheral came back. I tried explaining it away as my eyes played tricks until my boyfriend spoke up and asked did you see anything just now. I could have written it off had it just been me who saw it, but we both did and we haven't been able to explain it. This is a road we always take, and nothing like this has ever happened until that night. This was probably five to six years ago. I was working for a wind turbine company, 
and my crew and I were heading out to a turbine to do some work. This was probably 8 a.m. or so. Pretty morning, blue sky, and sunshine. In order to get to this particular turbine, we had to drive through a cemetery. I was driving, and two other guys were in the truck with me. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary as we were driving through the cemetery until we were nearly out of it. All of a sudden, I couldn't breathe. It felt like someone just put a plastic bag over my head. At the same time, it felt like something was trying to pull me out of the truck or something. It was nearly like it was pulling at my soul. It stopped almost as soon as it started. Both guys were looking at me like they had just seen a ghost. I immediately pulled over on the side of the road and had to catch my breath. It was the most unexplainable thing. Both guys said they felt the air drop 30 degrees, and I was shaking like I was trying to shoo away a bee or something. What in the world could that have been? I may never know. The other night, while driving home from my mill's house, we were passing some open fields. Most of the time, while passing the fields, we try to spot animals. Deer, fox, raccoons, etc. But that night, I saw something that scared me so much that my brain went into what I can only describe as shock. It took a full minute or more for me to understand what I saw. My husband, seeing me dazed, kept asking me what was wrong. What had happened? I couldn't speak. I just looked at him. What I saw was. Well, it was a thing. Pale and long. Climbing up the ditch to the field. Its body was twisted and branch-like, but bone-looking. Its head was eyeless, but its mouth was wide open, like it was screaming. I heard no sound as the windows were up, but it was moving, crawling, and reaching. My husband wanted to go back and look for it, but I begged him not to. I didn't want to see it again, and the fear it put into me stayed in my mind like steam stuck in your throat. Three years ago, in the middle of a snowstorm, I was driving down a gravel road heading home when I saw something move by the side of the road. Thinking it was a deer, I slowed down to a crawl. It wasn't an animal, it was a tall Native American man, dressed head to toe in buckskin. He walked slowly across the road in long strides, never breaking eye contact. I was about to roll down my window and see if he was okay when I noticed he wasn't leaving footprints. I scared the ever-loving crap out of me. I took off and didn't look back. I'm still spooked by that stretch of road, and I drive down it every night in the dark. I'd change my route, but the only other alternative is just as bad. A young man was bludgeoned to death on the side of the road about 20 years ago, and it still feels creepy in the cemetery. I live on an acreage, and to get home, I have to drive down the main road past farms, subdivisions, and other acreages. It was a month and a half ago, in August, that I was driving home from work at midnight. In one of the ditches, when I was about 500 meters away, my high beams illuminated a wolf's head and eyes. It was moving slightly as though it were eating something or sniffing for something, but my lights didn't show me what. We have coyotes out where we live, and everyone has dogs, but the coyotes are too cowardly to be that close to the road, and few people let their dogs roam loose at night. Most importantly, it was too big for a coyote or dog, it was even too big for a wolf. It looked like the size of a small bear. As I got closer, it stood up to about the height of a man, maybe a little taller, and moved towards me. At this point, I passed it at 100 kilometers and didn't look back, too scared to try and think about what it really was. This sighting was only about 3 kilometers from my house, so I noped inside the moment I pulled into the driveway. I am fully convinced I saw a werewolf. The location was in the middle of Alberta, in Strathcona County, which is east of Edmonton. We were on our way back from a wedding. My girlfriend and I were laughing and generally having a good time as we headed to our hotel the next town over. It should have been a 40-minute drive on a two-lane highway, but flooding had washed the highway out. Our GPS rerouted us on an auxiliary road. Bumpy asphalt soon gave way to gravel. Have you ever been on the back roads of Iowa on a moonless night? The darkness was oppressing. We could barely see 20 feet in front of us with the lights on. The GPS lost signal. We pulled over to pull out the map. The corn rustled, and a man stepped out. I am not easily scared, but in that moment, it felt like an icy hand gripped my heart. I peeled out of there like a bat out of hell. As soon as we were 200 feet down the road, the GPS found a signal, and we were safely on our way. I've had a few, but the scariest would have to be a few months ago, around 2 a.m., with my wife and daughter in the car. My daughter was asleep, but my wife was awake. I'm driving on a rural four-lane road when I see a black male in the far distance with a safety vest standing in the middle of the right lane, I was in the left lane, looking my way. I'm wondering what in the hell this man is doing, so as I'm approaching, I slow to around 40 miles per hour, paying close attention to what he's doing, and just as I'm about to pass, 
He looks dead at me and does a suicidal leap right in front of my car. I screamed and slammed on my brakes, but the man was gone. I'm freaking out and shaking, thinking I'm going crazy, and my wife asked what's wrong with me and freaked out when I told her. She said the road was clear the whole time, and there definitely wasn't a man, apparently considering he vanished as I made an impact. I still have no idea why I saw the man, but he was so well defined, even with his eyes looking straight at me before he jumped in front of my car. It still freaks me out. On my way to work at night, I noticed something a little strange on the side of the road that I don't normally see on this trip. I have to use the back roads to get to the interstate so that I can get from where I live in the sticks to the city where I work. It's not a very long trip, but it's pretty boring considering there isn't much scenery other than the rows of trees on the side of the road the whole way. But I make this trip on a regular basis, and it is usually uneventful. As I said, it was a normal drive to work until my headlights hit something that looked a little out of the ordinary. I wasn't worried at first because it is normal to see stray dogs walking around on the roads. But this one was different, and I didn't know why until I got closer. As I was driving up to it, I noticed it was walking a little funny. Almost like a human would if they were on all fours and trying to run. I say human because as I pulled up, slowing down to really get that scary movie thing going, until it was about 20 feet from the car, I noticed its legs were moving at odd angles to move this thing forward. Now the body was about the size of a mid-sized dog, but the legs were more like four arms that were longer than any legs on a dog that I have ever seen. And the way it was swinging them forward to where they came parallel to the ground was the weirdest part. But I soon didn't have time to really analyze because it had noticed that I had taken interest, and it had done the same to me. It started swinging its arms in full sprint towards the car. I have never accelerated so fast in my life. But as I said before, these were back roads, and hence there are no streetlights. So I had no idea where this thing was once my headlights were past it. I was going so fast that I had to slow down to make a turn that was coming up. I didn't know where it was until the low glow of red from my tail lights lit up this thing that was now chasing my car down the road. Needless to say, I didn't slow down again until I got to the interstate. So it will be daylight when I drive home, hopefully it doesn't like the sun. This actually happened to my dad when I was about 11 or so. I could tell when he told me this the day after it happened that he was genuinely scared. Before my dad retired, he worked all over the Midwest doing highway construction. He would be gone for one to two weeks at a time most of the summer, working from sunup to sundown. One night, he was on his way home in the middle of the night. He was probably 40 miles from home, out in the middle of nowhere, when he heard a knocking sound on the rear passenger truck door. He was instantly caught off guard and wondered if he should stop to get out and see what it was. He also thought about rolling his window down to see if he could figure out what made the sound. Something didn't feel right, so he decided to just keep driving. There was a town coming up soon anyway, so if it happened again, he could check in the light. He got into town, and the knocking had stopped. Somewhat relieved and getting closer to home, he decided to press on. As soon as he was out of the lights of the town, the knocking started again. This time, he was terrified. It literally sounded like knuckles, knocking steadily on the back door. It happened a few more times until he reached the lights of his hometown. The next day, he told my mom and me. We all went out to inspect his truck, which was covered in dirt from the construction. Only on the back door, where the knocking came from, were what looked like knuckle marks. He knocked on the truck, and it left nearly identical marks. Not long after that, we were speaking with a medicine man, we are Anishinaabe, and my dad told him what happened. He told us that it was good that he didn't get out or roll down his window, or whatever it was would have gotten closer. These things don't have good intentions and will try to trick you. I'm glad that my father was aware enough to recognize that it was something negative. If you hear knocking while driving, just ignore it and keep moving. My friend and I were driving down a bunch of rural roads into the mountains one night. We were on our way to a campsite, but we were running late and got lost a few times, so it was really late at night. We hadn't passed anyone else on the opposite side for a good 45 minutes or so. The roads were really dark, of course, there were no street lights or anything. Then some huge truck was suddenly behind us. He was right on our tail for miles and miles. It didn't matter how fast we went, he was right there behind us. We traveled up mountains, down valleys, and through tunnels and passed quite a few turnoffs, but this guy kept right up with us. Here we are, two girls in our early 20s with no real sense of where we are, just that this road somehow was supposed to lead to this campsite, and this huge hick truck is barreling after us. Finally, we reach the camp, and there are quite a few cars and trailers. You could see a few campfires flickering in the woods, so we knew people were still up. We get to the pull-up window, and my friend, 
who was the driver, starts giving her information to the lady, and I twist around in my seat to see the truck is gone. What a huge relief that was. One of the scariest nights of my life, that's for sure. I had a strange experience about two weeks ago and can't seem to find any kind of explanation or closure for it. I was helping my two sons move from Ashland, Oregon, back to their original home in Mesa, Arizona. We were driving south on Interstate 5 on April 30th. Myself and my younger son were driving in a rented U-Haul truck, and my oldest son was following directly behind in his personal Toyota truck. At around 1.30 a.m., we had been driving for about three hours straight, and my son and I were involved in a deep conversation. The night had been rainy, and it was a full moon, so the road was unusually lit and the sky was bright. Even though it was 1.30 a.m., it felt like dawn, the sky was so bright. We were in the middle of nowhere, between the very small towns of Delavan and Maxwell, California. Suddenly, on the right side of the road, I saw two older ladies violently waving their arms, trying to flag down traffic. One was slightly taller than the other, and they were both wearing sweatpants and sweatshirts. The one on the left was dressed head to toe in a pastel lavender color, and the one on the right in pastel pink. Both have identical shoulder-length bob haircuts, light brown in color. I couldn't see their eyes. My reaction time was slowed down due to my instinct that something was wrong. I let my foot off the gas and briefly considered pulling over, but quickly thought against it. After a few seconds, I asked my son, did you see those people back there? To which he answered, no, what are you talking about? Now this U-Haul I was driving was not the greatest, but it just so happened that the right headlight was slightly askew and was shining directly on these two ladies, and they were standing almost right on the white line on the side of the freeway. With him in the passenger seat, he should have seen them plain as day, as they were right in front of his sight line, and especially since the sky was so bright. So I picked up my phone and called my other son, who was driving behind me. Did you see those people on the side of the road? I asked. He replied, uh, no. I didn't see anyone. I made a point to look for a disabled vehicle, or any vehicle parked on the side of the highway. I saw none, either before I saw the ladies or after. The next day, I made phone calls to the police departments and the CHP and inquired about any motorists stranded the night before. There was no information anyone could give me, and there were no reports of anyone having trouble. I have heard stories of black-eyed people in pairs trying to flag people down on highways in the wee hours of the morning. Could this have been a case like this? It's bothered me ever since. I was coming home from work one night, it was probably around 9.45. I turned down the main drag for my suburb, which branches off into several other streets, mine included. And maybe about 50 feet in the air, on several streets in front of me, I see an orange-yellow, bright, perfectly circular light. Just hovering. Like a harvest moon, planted right in the middle of my neighborhood. I drove past some very tall trees, and it was gone. Completely gone, without a trace. I doubled back and saw nothing. I parked at my house and looked around the sky, nothing. I have no clue what it was, it was incredibly bizarre. The weirdest thing was not only that it was disappearing so fast, but that it wasn't illuminating anything, as bright as it seemed to be. There was no full moon that night, much less a harvest moon. No such lights are anywhere in my neighborhood. It was very odd. This story comes from a friend of mine that I used to share an apartment with. I interpreted it as a werewolf encounter at the time, but have since learned about skinwalkers and am leaning more towards that explanation now. My roommate, Jim, spent his high school years in a little town in eastern Wyoming. I can't recall the name of the town, but it was the kind of place that most people had forgotten about since the trains had stopped coming through. It was a very weird little town, and most of the people living there seemed to be very paranoid. A lot of parents would not let their children play outside after dark, and all unfamiliar faces were regarded with suspicion. Since the town was miles away from the nearest McDonald's, movie theater, or shopping mall, there was nothing for young people to do but get shitfaced drunk. That's what Jim and his friends were planning to do on the night that this story takes place. A fellow classmate was having a kegger at his parents' house that night, which was 20 miles out of town on a dirt road somewhere. Jim had reservations about driving out there in the dark because that general area was known to be sort of creepy at night, but his friends really wanted to go, and he was the only one with a car. So, after some coaxing, Jim and about five of his friends pile into his Buick and head out of town. About half an hour later, they realize that they are lost. They can't find the road that they are supposed to turn on, and it's too dark to read any of the signs. They haven't seen any houses or cars for a while, so they figure they must have taken a wrong turn somewhere and decided to head back to the main road. After turning the car around and driving in the opposite direction for a few miles, 
Jim spots something in the middle of the road up ahead. His friend in the passenger seat notices it at the same time and says, what the duck is that, dude? At first, they can't tell what they are looking at, but as the car draws nearer to the big black shape in the middle of the road, it starts to look like a mass of fur. Jim thinks it must be an animal, but it looks big enough to do damage to his car, so he slows down and stops the car about 20 feet away from the thing. At this point, it is completely illuminated by his headlights, but neither he nor his passengers can figure out what the hell kind of animal it might be. Since it hasn't moved, they assume it must be dead and start to argue over who will drag it over to the side of the road. That's when the thing starts to move. They all fall silent and watch as it stirs, then suddenly stand up. Jim would always preface the next part of the story with, I know this sounds crazy, but. He says he can't really describe what he saw because he had never seen anything like it before. The closest he can come is this, the thing, whatever it was, was about seven feet tall when it rose to its full height. Its body was shaped like a human male, but it was covered with thick, dark fur. The head, he said, and I watched the goose bumps break out on his arms as he said it, was not human. It looked almost like a jackal or a German shepherd, with a long snout and pointed ears, and its eyes were glowing in the headlights the way that a cat's eyes sometimes glow. It was staring right at them. Jim doesn't know how long he stared back at the thing before he noticed that it was clutching a dead rabbit in one of its enormous hands, paws. He had barely had time to register this bit of information when the creature suddenly flung the dead rabbit away and took a step towards the teenagers in the car. Everyone screamed, and Jim slammed the car into reverse, made a U-turn, and got the hell out of there. Needless to say, they didn't make it to the party that night. Last night around dusk, I went to check on a friend's house. My friend was out of town and asked me to keep an eye on his house. Driving down the dirt road leading up to his house, I saw two dogs lingering in the road in front of the house. I assumed one of them to be a neighbor's dog. I had never seen the other one, a small, black and white dog. Not minding the dogs much, I went inside the house and checked the back door and windows. Everything seemed undisturbed, so I locked the house and went back outside. As I walked back to my truck, I noticed that the small, black and white dog had come into the yard and up the driveway. He stood approximately 10 yards away from my truck. As I walked by him, he repeatedly said SHHT. In the back of my mind, I thought it was cute that the curious dog was trying to bark but couldn't make up his mind. I was amused, and I smiled. As I drove around the roundabout and back towards the road, I saw that the small dog was no longer in the area. As the truck lights aligned with the driveway and shined towards the road, I saw the small dog looking at me from behind a bush. The dog dashed out of sight. As I pulled onto the road, I saw a third dog coming from up the road. This dog was black and lanky. I had never seen him before, either. The lanky dog crossed in front of me. As he did, the headlight shined directly into his eyes. For two seconds, we made eye contact. He had green eyes. Immediately after, I thought it strange that I'd never seen a dog's eyes as they were illuminated by headlights and looking back at me. Something bugged me as I drove off. As I got to the paved road and started driving on it, I realized what bothered me. A normal dog's eyes shine and reflect light. This dog, when directly in front of me, had no eye shine as it looked directly into the light. I distinctly recalled seeing his forehead and snout, details you don't see when their eyes reflect light. I commented that real dog's eyes reflect light, and the lanky dog's eyes do not reflect light. Therefore, it wasn't a dog. This realization made me consider the other dog. It didn't bark. It said, SHHT. SHHT is a sound that Navajos make to get the attention of other Navajos, similar to how Americans say hey or how the British say oi. It dawned on me that the other dog wasn't a dog either, but a Navajo trying to get my attention. Furthermore, the small dog got extremely close, even the neighbor's dog keeps his distance, always staying on the dirt road whenever he comes over. I wondered about the intentions of the shapeshifters. As I drove, I repeatedly scanned my surroundings. Seeing no signs of evil following me, I concluded that the shapeshifters didn't concern themselves with me. I work a late shift at an Amazon warehouse, so I generally come home pretty late, like 2 to 3.30 am. It's about a 45 minute drive on some winding rural roads, so I've seen some weird shit. Abnormal amounts of roadkill, animals I can't identify, and stuff like that some of it was kind of freaky, but none of it was like this. I was driving home pretty tired, but largely awake. It was pretty foggy that night, so I was driving slowly because my headlights were shit after I got to the bottom of the main hill, the podcast I was listening to cut out. I don't always have great reception, so I figured it was nothing. Then I saw him. An old man with bloodshot eyes was wearing a green jacket. And standing in the middle of the road. I swear, 
I've never felt anything like that. His eyes stared into my soul, and I was filled with dread. I swerved around him and kept driving, much faster, till I got home. I don't normally lock the doors because I live in the middle of nowhere, but I definitely did that night. I don't know what the duck happened, but I don't think that was a human, and I'm scared because something about the way he looked at me felt wrong. And that he was out there in the middle of the night. I was having a sleepover with my best friend and her little sister, who live in the countryside in Finland. We were walking in a forest behind their house, and soon we walked from the forest to the side of the road. We started walking down the road to a well that was on the side of the road, about a mile away. It was a quiet road, only a few cars went by in an hour. We got to the well quickly and drank some water there. We stood there for a while and talked, and then we noticed two quite tall creatures about 50 meters away. One of them was standing on the side of the road, and the other one walked from one side of the road to the other, but they never came closer to us. They stayed in the same place for about 15 minutes and just moved from one side to another. They looked like humans, but we didn't see any details in them, although it was daytime and the sun was shining. They were like two black shadows. The way they moved around was strange, it looked like they were floating just slightly above the ground, and when they walked, they took very, very long steps. At first, we thought they were humans, and maybe they had a car accident or something, but we didn't see any cars. We also thought that maybe they were picking berries, but no, they just moved from one side to another. Then we decided to shout something to them. I think we yelled something like, hey, did your car break down or what? But they didn't respond. They didn't even look at us, they just continued doing that weird thing. We then started walking back to my friend's house, and we had brought along a toy arrow and a bow, and we shot haystacks that were on a field on the other side of the road. After an hour, we were still on the side of the road, messing around, and we could still see those two creatures in the distance. We were actually getting a little nervous because of those things, and we started running towards my friend's home. When we got there, we told her mother about what we saw, and about half an hour later, she drove with us to the same place where we saw those creatures. We didn't see anything in there. There were no signs of a car accident, and that would have been quite unlikely because there was never much traffic. We drove a couple more miles, and we saw nothing. Then we drove back to my friend's home. We still can't explain what those weird creatures were or where they came from. They just stayed there for at least over an hour. Maybe they were aliens or ghosts, who knows. Around the 29th of December, 2022, I was traveling from Santa Barbara to a small town in the middle of Nevada, where I was going to stop and see if I could make it back to my house or if I should wait for the rest of the day. I would like to say that there were four people in our car, including me. Three quarters of us saw this lady. She had a pale face, nearly white. She had scraggly black or brown hair going down past her shoulders. She also appeared to be wearing casual clothes that were clean. But weirdest of all, she had no face. I and everyone else who saw her are 100% sure she had no face. I think this was about 6 to 7 in the morning. The sun wasn't out yet. There were then some weird events in which road signs made no sense and were slowly becoming more common, to the point of being seen every 5 feet. And the fog is closing in. As I don't remember the road, I couldn't tell you if those signs were actually in our reality or not. I am sure I didn't fall asleep because I was very anxious and we were only a couple minutes from our Airbnb. Posted up right outside of Zion Park in an unmarked BLM campsite, it's almost midnight, and a car drives up this backcountry dirt road that I'm set up on the side of. It's pitch black, nobody has been around me for miles, there's plenty of empty sites all along this dirt path. This car drives right up to my spot and shines their car lights right into my sight and tent. Nobody gets out of the car, but they stay there for 12 whole minutes. I was scared sh all alone with just a pocket knife and bear spray in my tent for protection. I was too terrified to get out of the tent. Then they started to drive to the end of the dirt road, which is a dead end. They never turned back around, so I assumed they stopped for camp. I barely slept that night, I was too scared. Next morning I was up and ready to go a little after sunrise, so as I left, I went up to the end of the road to loop around, and there was nobody up there. Nobody. I feel like there's no way I could have slept through them leaving but I guess there's the tiniest possibility. Or it was a Utah ghost car, who knows. All I know is that it was one of the creepiest camping experiences of my life. When I was a senior in high school, a bunch of my friends and I used to drive into the hills to drink and get away from our parents. I was the DD one night and drove back four of my friends. Two of the girls were really drunk and started puking, so we pulled over in a park. Both of the girls started puking outside my car doors, and then this pickup rolled up behind us and had its high beams on us. 
I thought it was the cops and was just waiting for them to bust us, but the person in the car just stayed there. Eventually, we closed the doors and drove away. The pickup followed us. I started driving faster and through a neighborhood I knew really well, taking every turn and starting to speed up, but the pickup kept following us. Eventually my friends needed to puke again, and we pulled over. The pickup stopped behind us and again just kept its lights on us. I looked through my rearview mirror and saw an older white guy with a beard. He started reaching for something in his glove compartment. At that point, I freaked out, told my friends to pull my other friends in the car, and floored it. We took a couple turns and lost the guy. We stayed in the driveway of a random person for like 15 minutes and then decided it was safe. We turned back onto the main street, and the pickup truck was waiting for US. I drove as fast as I could down the main street, and the pickup kept following us. Eventually, at the bottom of a hill, there was a massive accident and a bunch of police cars and fire trucks. I started to slow down, like I was going to pull over towards the police. The pickup overtook us, ran a red light in front of the cops, and I never saw him again. I have no idea who that guy was or what he wanted, but it was terrifying. I was born and raised in New Mexico and ended up moving to California with my father throughout the rest of my life, with the exception of some stints here and there due to jobs and whatnot. Normally, I avoid New Mexico like the plague. It is a haunted, godforsaken hellhole. I was driving my piece of crap Honda down the highway when it just ran out of gas. I found that odd because when I started the car, initially I still had a quarter of a tank, but, such is, I guess. It just sort of sputtered out in the middle of the highway around the end of the road to the reservation. I knew that there was a gas station about a mile away once I managed to get out onto the highway. So, I took my empty gas canister out of my trunk and walked out in the heat. I had a backpack of Gatorades and water bottles to avoid heat stroke. I was aware I could lose quite a bit of electrolyte very quickly. On the road I walked down, it was very complicated to call my sister Kelly to let her know where I was and what the situation was because there just did not seem to be a signal anywhere. I walked and I walked, sticking my thumb out to no avail, for there were no reservation police or other passerby trucks. It seemed as if I was all alone out in the bright, heated, sunshiny day out in the middle of friggin nowhere, New Mexico. As I walked, I saw a dead hummingbird on the ground. I found that very sad at first. Yet, as I walked further and further, I found it odd that there was even a hummingbird there in the first place. They are not typically seen in the area where I come from. They're not non-existent, but they're just super duper rare to see. There's not a bunch of what I would consider to be the sort of nectar they seek, nor pollen from flowers that they desire. Further along, I continued down the open road with the sun beating down upon me. Soon after that, I saw another dead hummingbird. Now, I thought, this is getting weird. Weirder and weirder, perhaps. I suppose deep down, I sort of subconsciously preferred to consider it just a coincidence. It was only after a few hundred yards more that I saw another one, and then shortly after another one, and another, and then another. And then more. And then, even more. It came to a point where the more constant dead hummingbirds started to trail away from the side of the road and then make a trail off and into the berm. This may have been a bad idea on my part, but my weakness has always been that my curiosity has preferred to get the better of me. Which is what killed the cat. So, I followed the trail of dead hummingbirds. It was almost like a Hansel and Gretel breadcrumb trail, it seemed as if it was some sort of methodically laid out plan of, follow the dead hummingbirds, if you dare. It went on and on until I had passed the berm and was completely away from the road, now out in the arroyo and deep down amidst the few sparse trees to and fro, and that was where I found it. It was. It was something I was not sure I could ever describe. It was just like this, this strange pile of dead hummingbirds. Like, it was friggin' huge. Maybe about two feet from the ground. A huge, massive, disturbing pile of them I sort of stood there rather perplexed, and I scanned all around the place to see if there was some sort of indication as to what had transpired. Yet, there was not a, nothing, zilch. It seemed as if there was just an inexplicable pile of dead hummingbirds out in the middle of the desert. It looked like a holocaust for them. That's when the real weirdness happened. There was this very strange, shaky, quivering sort of hum that was more than just audible. No, this was also physical. I cannot say that the ground was shaking, I would rather say it seemed as if my head did. I began to feel a bit nauseous, and the first thing I thought to myself was, get up on out of here. Like a coward, I did. I ran and I ran and the worst decision I didn't even realize that I had made was that I just started running randomly without any adherence to where I originally came from. Basically, I was just running in a direction without any regard. It took me a solid 30 to 45 minutes of running throughout the arroyo to find the road again. 
some native was driving down the road when I stumbled out from the side of the road, and he picked me up and gave me a ride to the casino that had a gas station. When I filled up, he offered to give me a ride back to the car. He could tell that I was shaken up, and I could sort of sense he didn't want to broach the subject but sort of felt as if he should. So he asked me if I was alright. I didn't want to go into it much, but I sort of explained a few of the details, but only a few, for fear of sounding like an absolute whack job. After what I had told him, his silence was what unnerved me the most. He either thought I was nuts or he straight up did not want to talk about it. Eventually, that hum, he said. Yeah, it makes me sick, too. We live in the boondocks. We are about 25 minutes from this town, but it's still the closest, the next closest is about 35 minutes. Anyway, every time I go down this street, I feel like I'm in a Stephen King novel. I get the weirdest vibes from this stretch of road, too. There are spirits there, and not the happy kind either. Back in the 1920s and 1930s, as they were building the road, they knew they wanted to take the most direct, straight path to get from where they started to where they were going to end. But to do that, they had to come in and relocate a bunch of graves. Most of them were Civil War graves, both Confederate and Union. That did not end well, there were four workers killed just moving the graves. Two of them died in separate incidents when a casket fell on them. One died when he was directing a tractor and walked backwards into an open grave, breaking his neck. The last one was not so sinister, he had a heart attack. If you believe that innocent things happen where spirit activity is at its worst, there were some more deaths working on the road itself, but I won't get into all that except to say they were all suspicious when looking at the whole situation. Everybody I know gets creeped out driving through there, in between the two sides of the cemetery. The town was founded in 1840, with the Civil War ending in 1865. It was the 20s and 30s before the road was built, so you can imagine how many graves had to be moved to give the road the width it needed over a 0.5 mile length. I've never spoken to anyone who had an actual paranormal experience, but I have talked to several people like me who are in tune with the paranormal, sensitive, or whatever you want to call it, and there are definitely several upset spirits there, they want their original grave back. I did not encounter this myself, my brother did. He was coming back from work, and he took the usual route, which he always takes. The road that he takes is a country road with loads of bends and no street lights and a speed limit of 60 miles per hour, I don't know why these types of roads have these insane speed limits. So he was driving at 30 miles per hour, all alone on the road, no other cars. As he was driving, he saw a deer sitting perfectly in the middle of the lane, like right in the middle, resting. He panicked, of course, as one would do, he tried to press the clutch and the brake so he could stop before hitting the deer. Mind you, this deer was massive, was sitting completely still, and did not react when the car came close, as a normal animal would react when in danger. So as he came close, he realized that the car would not stop, so he had no choice but to keep driving as he could not stop. He hit the humongous deer, and he described the feeling as a heavy scrape, and the car jolted heavily, as a normal car would. But with the force he felt, he thought the car's bumper would be severely damaged and that beneath the car would have been gone too. The car stopped because it has an automatic setting in which if the brake is pressed without the clutch, it will turn off. So when the car stopped, he heard the deer let out two loud squeals. And he thought nah, allow this, I'm leaving this place. So he drove away to a safe place to stop and check the car. When he checked the car all over, he noticed that the car seemed untouched, there was not a single scratch or dent, and the underneath of the car was perfectly normal. This story comes from my cousin, Ralph. It's been about 20 years since I've heard it. This took place in the 1950s in a very rural area of eastern Kentucky. At the time, cars weren't much of a thing there, and it wasn't uncommon for people to ride horses, wagons, or buggies. So, Ralph is walking home from his girlfriend's house and ended up getting a late start, so it was dark by the time he was on the way. He said the moon was so bright you could still see everything fairly well, though. He makes it a fair bit down the road and starts to hear a horse coming towards him from up ahead. He moves over to the side of the road to give it plenty of room, and I assume he doesn't get run over. It gets closer, and he can see that it's a horse pulling a wagon. It gets right next to him, and he can see a figure sitting at the helm of the wagon, and this figure has no head. The torso and shoulders kind of turned towards him, like it was looking at him, you know, minus the head. He watched it go on by him all the way until it was totally out of sight, then ran the rest of the way home, even taking a shortcut through the creek just to get there a little faster. Sounds unbelievable, right? Here's the thing, everyone who knows the story believes him. No exceptions. Ralph is a pretty straight-laced guy and always has been. He doesn't have a sense of humor at all, 
he is always very serious and straightforward. He's pretty trustworthy too and has never been known to lie or make things up, so everyone believes him about this story, and so do I after hearing it directly from him. So about two years ago, me and my friend went to California on a trip. While on the trip, we did all the basic stuff you do in California, we tried new foods, went to Disneyland, and went to the beach. We went to Venice Beach on May 13, 2021. We were in the water looking for shells when, all of a sudden, the world went dark. I know that it wasn't just me and her who saw it because there were other people on the beach and in the water who noticed it as well. I know that the others on the beach saw it because they were looking up at the sky like me and my friend were. I call it a sun blink because that's what it was. The darkness lasted less than a second, and there was nothing in the sky or anything that could have caused this. The world didn't go pitch black, though, it's like the world glitched into night mode and then back to day. It's always freaked the both of us out, and we have never been able to explain it. So two months ago, I was driving alone to pick up groceries. The drive there is usually busy, with winding roads and a few blind turns. It's about a 15-minute drive to the store we like to go to. Halfway there, I was listening to loud music, and I started to speed up a little bit, for some reason, I unconsciously speed up when a more loud or intense song plays. It also happened to be one of the blind turns when I did it, idiot me, I know. The road was clear as much as I could see, but something audibly told me to slow down. Before you ask, no, it wasn't the song. The song was in one of those instrumental-only parts, and I know the song by heart, and no one speaks there. The whisper didn't sound like my voice in my head, it didn't sound male or female, and it sounded like it came from behind me to the right. I wasn't scared when I heard it, but I listened and slowed down. If I hadn't, I completely believe I would have been in a car crash since there was a stopped dark car hiding around the turn that I wouldn't have seen very well, or at least soon enough. After that, you better believe I said WTF out loud, but I was more shocked and in disbelief than scared. Like, did that just happen? I still wonder what or who it was that possibly saved my life or someone else's. I've had no family close to me die, so I don't believe it was any deceased family member unless great-grandparents still care to look out for me, even though I've either never met them or met them when I was a baby. Or if it was an angel. Side note, I was also shocked because I thought, did this really happen to me? My grandmother and sister have both had paranormal experiences, but they were long before I was born. They always interested me so much, and though this may be seen as a small experience, I like to believe I experienced something at least. So I was bored this Friday and decided to go to a weird cemetery that dates back to the 1800s. So my buddy and I grab my camera bag and head off. It was about 20 minutes from my house, so I decided it was worth the small drive, however, this cemetery is a little different. For starters, the graves aren't in rows, they are just scattered all over the place, some even overlapping, and a forest has grown over them. We got there about 10 minutes before sunset, around 5.45pm, and I started assembling my camera. Keep in mind that I charge my batteries before every trip, and I always carry two. Well, I turned my camera on, and it said full charge, so off we went. However, the first we ducked up sign came when I went to take a picture of a grave and my battery was flashing red like it was about to die, so I changed my battery and did the same thing for that one. I wish that's where the story ended, but sadly, it doesn't. We were looking at some of the headstones and avoiding walking in front of them to remain respectful of their final place of rest. When we started walking a little deeper into the woods, I noticed a headstone a little different from the rest. It was about 4 feet high and had no markings. Then in the distance, about 30 feet, I see another and then another and another, so we walk to the second one when my buddy looks at me with fear in his eyes and says, Hey, uh, the ground is loose right here, so I look at the ground, and it's not near a grave, however, it appeared to be a new grave, so I look around, and sure as shit, there are tons of them right where we had been walking minutes before, yet neither of us had noticed when I was watching the ground the whole time. Yet the worst part was when I looked back up to see if there was an end to the stone pillars before they weren't there, only the two I had actually been to, and that's when we saw it. A tree. Not just any tree, but a tree that was twisted and bent and had what appeared to be tons of little trees wrapping around it. At the time, I thought it looked cool, so I took a picture of it. By this time, it was near dark, yet the picture was bright as day, and no flash was on. At that moment, we heard a very strange, inhuman noise in the distance. I thought I had seen the pillars, so we ran back to the car, but since then, I've wanted to go back so badly, and I don't know why. After these few days, I've realized we went on a full moon, so I don't know if that did something, but walking in, I wasn't a believer in the paranormal or supernatural, but now I am. I still get the feeling that something truly awful is buried under that tree. 
One night we were driving around Germantown, Wisconsin, around 10.30 to 11 p.m., and we decided to drive out to Witch Road, actually Callan Road. The story that everyone tells is that a witch lived in one of the now fallen houses, and you can see both the witch and the girl she was trying to capture in the shadows of the trees. The closest to the correct story I ever read is that it was a murder-suicide in that home. Anyways, we drove out to Helenville to go down the road, and maybe 30 feet into the road, something hit the top of my truck incredibly hard, hard enough for the antenna to hit the A pillar of the truck. Now, something to note is that I was driving a Ford Ranger, so it's not something crazy tall, and there weren't any low-hanging branches or damage to the outside of the truck. All the while going down the road, both of us felt very uneasy and unwelcome. Further into the road, we started seeing small, pure white specks of light along the side of the road. My friend tried to dismiss them as fireflies, but they emit a yellow glow, not white. Aside from the lights and something hitting the roof of my truck, nothing happened, but I had a horrible, uneasy feeling of being watched the whole way home. I was living in the NC mountains at the time but still had a home on the coast, so every Friday I would go back to my other home. I was working in the mountains, living alone, until we, my wife and I, could both afford to move out there. It's about a 400 mile drive that takes 4 to 6 hours. This whole thing is weird to me. I've made this drive countless times. A long, straight east trek down the interstates well, this time it wasn't so straight. At the time, I was still unfamiliar with the route and relying on my GPS. GPS, for some reason, starts taking me down all these back roads and side roads to the point that I can't get back to the interstate, so I just decide whatever I'll follow. This is about 150 miles away. Let me also add that it's getting fairly late in the evening, sometime after 10. Most of my trip had been dark, which is partly why I let the GPS get me so off track. This is where it gets weird. I continue down the back roads, and there are hardly any other cars or houses around. I go on for about another 50 miles, now at around 200 miles of my trip with 200 to go. Suddenly, I'm waking up at a gas station with only 100 miles left on my trip. There was a highway patrol car parked behind me and another car at a gas pump. It was like waking from the deepest sleep I've ever had. I had no recollection of who I was, where I was, how I got there, or why the hell was I even there. I was shaking, and it was difficult to move around. Slowly, things started coming back to me. Before I remembered who I was, I remembered how to use my phone. I didn't know anyone in my contacts, so I called my brother, who was the one person I could vaguely remember. I don't even really remember the contact name, Brutta. He answers and says something I can't make out, and the only things I could say were that I don't know who or where I am, and I'm scared of what's going on. After a few rounds of repeating myself, he realizes I'm not joking. I stay on the phone with him for about 20 minutes, trying to piece myself back together. I sat there for another 20 minutes before I worked up the nerve to try to leave. Still unsure where I was going but desperately wanting to leave where I was, I just went to the most recent address in my GPS and left. I got there still very shaken up and somewhat confused. The next two or three days felt like I was physically there, but that's it. It took a while before I felt somewhat normal again. From that day on, though, I've never really been the same, and I'm not sure why. <laughs>